And we are back now with the doctors from E's hit show, Botched. They also operated on Kelsey Riley, whose breast augmentation surgery went very wrong with another doctor. Let's listen to Kelsey tell her story. And if you've got some young ones in the room, you may want to have them do one of these for these pictures. Stand by. I wasn't able to go and hang out with my friends because I was in pain. I missed school because I was in pain. I went to a doctor who first mentioned the words endometriosis to me. I really felt like I had no control over my body, but I thought that I had control over my breasts, and that's really what pushed me to have breast implants. When I woke up, I immediately looked down at my chest. I'm expecting to see perfect, perky breasts, and I was mortified when I saw I had a double bubble, and I had questioned the surgeon, and he told me, oh, you're swollen, you'll heal, they're not in the right place yet, but I knew something was really wrong. Kelsey, welcome. Um, so you, you you didn't know. You thought it looked off, but your doctor kept telling you. Needs time to heal. Don't worry about it. It'll get better. And of course, after I see them like that, I'm not going to keep going to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what they say. Don't don't let who messed it up fix it. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> let who broke it fix it. That's right. what it is right. when it comes to medicine in general. So... Mm -hmm. How is this affecting like your, your love life, your intimate relationships? Well, um, I have endometriosis, so that already puts a strain. I don't date. I'm looking to date now, though. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, if you don't feel confident about yourself, you're not going to be able to open up to someone. So I wasn't dating for a while, but you now I'm branching the out. Ringer, because the endometriosis had you, I, you were pretty open about just mm -hmm. periods that would basically go on for months yeah. and extreme mm -hmm. pain shots intramuscular yeah. to try to get it under control, surgeries. Mm -hmm. So you're already sort of feeling like, oh. Yeah, exactly. And then this was supposed to make you feel better mm -hmm. and did the opposite. Exactly, yeah. All right, so so she comes to you guys, and this one's for you, Dr. Dubrow, right? Because yeah. you, you yes. did the, the body. And when you saw that, like, what, what was done wrong there? Uh, this is one of the most difficult complications to fix in all of breast augmentation surgery. This is called malposition or bottoming out, where the crease, where the breast meets the chest, was disrupted. It's sort of a classic F up. It's, it's mm -hmm. what you sort of learn not to do your first day in plastic surgery training. And unfortunately, 50% of cosmetic surgery done in this country is done by non-board certified plastic surgeons. Was this guy who did you board uh, certified? He, you know, he actually was, so I really can't use that excuse. It's not a guarantee, though. <laughs> it's not a guarantee. And you had a friend, this was the, he had done the, uh, a My, friend's sister. Yeah, mm -hmm. who had what I thought were great results. Mm -hmm. So that's, so what, what should she have done more to investigate the, the plastic surgery? Um, in this case, the doctor just sort of didn't really recognize that she had kind of an anatomical setup that would lead to this complication. When I saw the pre-op photos, I thought, oh, if you put too big an implant in, if you dissect a little too low, this is going to happen. So fixing this, 1 out of 10, 10 being the most difficult, what, what level was this? This, if you look in the plaster textbooks, this is considered not fixable. Right, but, uh, you know, Botch has given us this exp these experiences that no plastic surgeon has had. So we, I was actually able to fix this in about an hour because we've done so many. Wow. And it's, it's not that I'm so special, although I kind of am. No. <laughs> You're pretty good. It, it's not that. It's just that we see so much of this, and we've been given such a huge experience doing this, you get really good at doing the impossible, and that's yep. what five seasons of Botch has given us, the ability to sort of fix the impossible. How, how do they look now? Oh, amazing. Are they, now they're perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Now you're like, who wants to date? Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not waste time with drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but are you glad you went to them? I mean, because yeah. it must have been scary to go under the knife again after it's it going so wrong. It's always scary, you know, for any surgery, but I'm so happy with the results. I couldn't be any happier. One of the nice things of the episode that Kelsey's in is her relationship with her mom. So her mom went with her. She helped her with the endometriosis. She went with you and you got the initial breast implants. Mm -hmm. But you didn't tell her that you had no. a complication. Mm -mm. Why? Um, I was embarrassed. Nobody knew until I reached out to you guys. That's when I, the first time I opened up about it. Why didn't you? Why? I just, I was embarrassed. I knew I couldn't afford to fix it and I had so many other issues going on that I put that on the back burner. But you know what, that, there's a lesson there mm -hmm. that, you know, the more you lean on people around you, mm -hmm. even if it's a complication from a cosmetic yeah. procedure, 
the better you feel. You don't have to go through that alone. Oh, yeah, it was like a weight off my shoulders when I told her. And if you find these guys, you don't even have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like all wrapped. All right, so listen. One of the things I wanted to do when they came here was to ask them all the questions about plastic surgery that you want to know the answers to, but you were too afraid to ask. And we're going to do that right after this break. Kelsey Aldebar. <laughs> And we're back now with doctors from Botched on our sister network, E, which is a fascinating show if you have not seen it. Okay, so I want to ask you, there was a woman who came in on season one, uh, season five, episode yeah. one, I've, I've gotten the preview, it's coming out May 9th, who had enormous breasts. I mean, bigger than anything I've ever seen. This is the woman. Now, may I say this woman is completely happy with the size of her breasts, and so is the husband. Um, but they were, they were asymmetrical. And in the end, you guys were basically like, I can't help you without making it worse. Right. So you don't, you don't take everybody. We turn down a lot of people, as they should be turned down. First of all, what doctor would put these size implants in anyone, right? <laughs> it, it's important to understand no one needs plastic surgery. Now, in the case of the dog bite, yes, she needs reconstructive surgery. But when it comes to cosmetic surgery, the first thing you want to do is make sure it's done safely and appropriately for the right reasons. Those are obviously not the right yeah. reasons, and that's dangerous. Her plastic surgeon gave her, like, ports where she could fill them up herself. She had her husband sticking a needle in there and making them bigger, bigger, bigger. Right. So her plastic surgeon is allowing her to practice medicine at home. Okay. It's never a good idea. Never a good yeah. idea. Very dangerous. We highlight that on Botched. You all know. right, I have a couple questions for you, though, because there, there are, in, in my industry in particular, we talk about this stuff all the time. Fillers. Are, I've never had fillers. I'm afraid of fillers. Am I wrong? No, you should be afraid of fillers. Matter of fact, I give lectures internationally and, you know, across the country on complications with fillers. So blindness. Uh, blindness? Losing, blindness, losing actually the tip of the skin on the nose. I mean, these are things that could happen. Besides the basic things like irregularities, or especially if it's not something that's reversible. If you get them done like here, mm -hmm. then it seems like they they come down here over time. They, like, how do people start to look a little off? But is, is that just they had a bad doctor? Yeah, well, you know, that's usually that's technical. Okay. And um, one of the most important things that we treat patients also, if they go to the, they still go to these pumping parties where they have illegal substances, usually non-medical grade silicone injected in the face. Then that ruins or their body, and that ruins their entire life. Okay. So what about what's the most popular procedure that people want from you? The guys? most popular procedure is breast augmentation by a factor of five. But the most, the fastest growing procedure is buttock augmentation. We call that the Kardashian effect, okay? <laughs> Where Can I just ask you, do you believe that, that the Kardashians have had butt buttock augmentation? I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't come, I, re I actually really don't know. I know they look great, but I will tell you that Do you believe that the Kardashians have had, okay. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I can tell you this procedure is growing at a, an alarming rate and it's actually dangerous. Why? Because you take fat from one part of the body, you inject it into the buttock, and there are veins in the buttock. And we do this blindly, right? If it gets into one of the large veins of the buttock and it can track back to the heart and into the lungs, that can kill you, and that's actually happening now frequently. Oh, my gosh. So it's not a procedure you want to take lightly. You shouldn't take any plastic surgery procedure lightly. There, there, was, there was a woman, um, I think she may have been a real housewife. These guys... You're married to a former Real Housewife. You, we you're both. Ma you were yes. married to a Real Housewife. But there, it, it wasn't anybody you, who you were married to. No. But she just had it done on TV to get rid of the cellulite in her rear end. And I, that was the first time I was like, oh, go on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, does it cure cellulite? No. No, okay. absolutely not. I mean, there's machines that cure cellulite, but not putting fat there. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. So is there, like, an age beyond which w women and men should not get plastic surgery? I got to tell you, I have patients still that come in their 80s that want a little zhuzhing of their face and they want a little, you know, whether it's a little facial microdermabrasion, even a little Botox or fillers. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it really just depends on, you know, obviously the health is very important. And then as our elasticity of the skin starts to decrease, then we have to be careful what we do because we can make somebody look worse. How so about men? Great. What's what's the percentage of men coming in? I would say about 20% for me. It's okay. about 10% for me. You know, men just don't want to talk about it, though. Yeah. Women right. are more comfortable talking about plastic surgery, but not men. Well, yeah. listen, I mean, you guys have done a lot of great work on that show. You've really helped a lot of people Thank you. who, I mean, like our guest today, who yeah. really needed it. So good luck to you. And thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, don't forget.
season five of Botch premieres on our sister network E this Wednesday, May 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.